Hi everyone, welcome to an acrylic painting tutorial with me, Laura, and today I'm going to show you how to paint this cute little wave painting, which talks about how to paint the sky really simply and this little crest of a wave. <laughs> So let's have a little chat about some of the colours that we're going to be using, some of the materials for this tutorial. I'm just going to be using four colours. We've got titanium white and I'm using these uh, Pabeo High Viscosity Studio Acrylics and I always recommend getting high viscosity acrylics um, but you can use any acrylics you, that you like. This video is not sponsored so these are just my chosen paid for <laughs> products. I'm using titanium white and for the sky I'm going to be using some uh, cerulean blue this colour here and I'm also going to have a little bit of green there's a lot of green that appears in water so we've got cadmium green and also my favourite colour which pretty much appears in every painting that I do and that's Payne's grey so a nice Payne's grey the types of brushes that I use I'm going to be using a couple of flat ended brushes you can pretty much use any brushes that you like I prefer these graduate daily rounding brushes I'm going to use a size 8 and a 4 but I kind of just use what I have to hand that goes with acrylic paints. You don't want to use watercolour brushes for acrylic paints because it will ruin your brushes. And of course I've got a little bit of water as well and it's a good idea to have a little bit of kitchen roll and I would like to use my little palette. This is just baking paper from the kitchen so it works really well as a little disposable palette so you don't have to wash all those products down the sink. So any leftover I like to put the paint back in the pot. So okay, so what we're going to start off with first is we're going to always work on the sky first. I like to do that. So, so most of my acrylic painting is done with a dry brush, but at the very beginning I do like just to wet the brush so it's a little bit damp and I use the kitchen roll to dry the excess, excess water off. But we're going to take a little bit of this cerulean blue and it's quite dark, it's quite vivid, so we're going to add quite a bit of white and just mix that to make quite a pale blue and we're just going to roughly etch out a bit of a sort of wave like this and then our sky is going to start from here and you can be quite sort of forgiving with the paint you can just be quite messy because all these little flecks of white paper that show through. Oh, I forgot to mention the paper. I'm using a mixed media paper and uh, it's actually, so it's actually this brand here, Dale around it, and it's just a mixed media so you can use lots of different uh, craft materials on it. So it's the one I use the most. So we're just going to keep adding, adding that. Some darker blue, we're just going to mix it up. And it's quite fun just doing little paintings. It sort of gets you learning some basic techniques without committing to a much larger painting. So I'm hoping this little quick tutorial will be sort of about say 20 minutes, half an hour. And what you can do once you've got a sort of base, a bit darker at the top than it is at the bottom, is just take some white and just blend in some white like this. So if you've got too much on your brush you can just wipe it off on the kitchen roll. And what this will do is create the illusion of wispy clouds. It's little bits of white. So I'm just brushing it in, quite a dry brush. And you can see it just starts creating the illusion of little clouds. I'm going to add a little bit more white towards the horizon. It's a little bit too dark. And I think, well there, I think that is our sky done. So super quick. And of course you can add much more sort of vivid, use a smaller brush if you want to, or just add more sharper white bits to really pop some clouds so they pop out. So you can really play with the sort of fluffiness of clouds, but be just, you know, quite relaxed with it. Don't feel like you have to create the perfect cloud, because is there such a thing as a perfect cloud? So there we go, we're going to go with that for our little sky. And then I'm going to rinse off the paint. Okay, so having a dry brush again, I'm still working with the same brush, I'm not even sure if I'll go to the smaller brush, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to work on this little wave now and uh, this is going to be the slightly more 
bigger part of the wave and it shallows out to here and uh, we want to create some quite sort of dark dark colors we're going to take the Payne's gray and just mix that we're going to add a tiny bit of green it's going to add a little bit of, of that cadmium green and we're just going to go up to that line here and just work the dark blue a bit more of that and just do that across the top but not quite at the end we're just going to do it quite there it's going to be like the crest of the wave I'm going to bring that down a little bit to where and even a bit down here And then we're just going to add a little bit more green and put that in at the top over here. Just blend that in. Be quite free with the brush. Don't be afraid of it being perfect because I often find the more you try and make a painting like perfect, <laughs> there's no such thing as a perfect painting, um, the more frustrated you'll get with it. I think if you're just, you relax with it and you just play with the colors, um, you'll have a lot more fun and you'll find that effects will just appear and you'll be like, oh, that really works. And I think when you get, get situations like that, where you think, oh, like that cloud, for example, it's like, that's great. I, you know, I'm really happy with that little cloud. And then there's this tendency to want to make it even better, but sometimes it's just quick roll your head and then just stop and leave it. <laughs> so I've just rinsed my brush and it's a bit dry again. And this more in the sort of foreground, the lower part of the wave, we're going to add sort of some of this Payne's grey and some of the sky colour because and a little bit of the white just to lighten that up because this is reflecting more of the a bit darker at the top reflecting more of the sky so as it comes down it's got more of the sky so it's going to have a look. this is the same cerulean blue it's just made a bit darker with the Payne's gray it's almost a little bit too light we go that's it so we want it darker at the top and then getting lighter towards the bottom if you find you've got any of these sort of unmixed parts you can just add little bits of Payne's grey to darken it in And then we're going to leave that to dry. Okay, so once that's dry a bit, we're just going to add a few streaks of darker colours and lighter colours. So we're going to take some of the Payne's Grey. We're just going to add some sort of streaks of darker parts where the water's moving. Very subtle. Nothing too, too obvious. We still want it quite dark at the top as well. So we can add a little bit more Payne's Grey at the top. And then we're going to have the fun part, which really makes it pop, and that's the white. And this is where you want a high viscosity white, because a lot of acrylic whites, quite cheap ones, tend to be watered down and you just can't get that vivid white colour. So we're going to take a little bit of this titanium white, and we don't want very much on a brush. If you feel like you've got too much, you can just brush it off so you've got quite a sort of dry amount. And then we're going to start off with this sort of spray at the top and we want to catch that crest and act like it's spraying in the wind a bit. Again it's just a dry brush so sort of just flicking upwards always put the paint on tentatively at first just so you don't add big splodges of paint and then 
this is a wave that's slowly crashing so we're gonna bring some of the white down to here Just dry brushing that in and it's going to keep adding little speckles of white. You can add more stronger white in certain areas so it really stands out. I'll do that across the top. I'm actually going to swap to my smaller brush now. So I'm just small swapping, swapping, swapping to a slightly smaller brush. Again coming in with it dry and we're going to use this flat brush. This is where a flat brush is, has an advantage over the uh, a round brush. We're going to go across the, the edge at the top, just like little dots though, it doesn't have to be a perfect line. And then we're just going to add a few just sprinkles of white coming down. Coming up with all sorts of words, sprinkles of white. Sometimes the little happy mistakes, I sound like Bob Ross now, happy mistakes, <laughs> can make really nice little effects. So don't worry too much if you get a little extra splotch here. So I'm just adding some extra white, just pure titanium white in certain areas. But careful not to overdo it. We don't want to add too much white. Again, I'm just going to add some more vivid white, and this is where you might want to just literally dip right into the brush, and you've got pure paint on the top. And very, very carefully, just using like the corner of your brush, we're going to add almost 3D, almost textured bits of white. So we're going to have these like, where it's catching the light above. And then we want a few streaks of white just and there we go I think that's pretty much it our little crest of a wave I might just add a little bit more white to this part here so where the waves are really crashing. There we go. And if you want to, you can also add some darker with a dry brush, add some really dark Payne's grey, maybe a little bit of green, and just add that back in under there if you've got any lighter parts, because under where the crest of the wave is where the, the white is, it's often very dark, so, but we'll leave it green on top there where it's sort of catching more of the light. And there we go, I think our little wave is done. So all that's left to do now is a little quick painting is to take the tape off. This tape I use here is just a masking tape. So I'm not sure even sure what brand it is. It's just a masking tape, nothing fancy. And a little trick to getting this off without ripping the paper is just to get a hairdryer, it's hairdryer on it. So I'm just gonna hairdry this so it warms the glue and then we'll peel off the tape for the finished painting. So I've warmed up the tape and now the fun part, which I like to do, and someone once asked me why do artists like to put tape 
and then peel it off. And I think one, it's extremely satisfying, but it just creates a nice sharp edge. And sometimes it can just make a painting really come alive because it looks like a little natural frame. So you can see this is coming off quite easy because I've warmed the glue. And there we go. There is our little painting, our little little wave on a sunny day. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that uh, art tutorial, something a little bit different. Hopefully you'll give it a try and uh, always start small and try not to get too overwhelmed with trying to make it perfect because sometimes mistakes actually look more professional and more fun. So happy painting. I'll see you soon for some more art fun. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.